Let me give you the rundown on Felina Hansen. Like I, I mentioned before, she is the founder of Hira Hub, which is an international co-working space specifically for women. She has over 20 years of experience um, with technology startups and other um, sorts of companies. So she is pretty much a serial entrepreneur. And she's also helped several, uh, a couple of women's organizations grow their um, grow their their membership base so she's also an expert at digital marketing and helping grow your audience so I'm really excited to have her here today if you have any questions for you um, I've always said that we do these types of interviews so that you can have access to people like Felina and her expertise so if you have any questions for her be sure and uh, put them in the comments for us as well so Felina thank you so much for for being here today my pleasure yeah, I apologize for all the technical issues, um, and I apologize to the audience today because they're used to seeing our our guest, and today um, we are going to be doing an audio only because of the technical issues that we're having, but I really wanted to have this content out to you because I think there's some really valuable information that we're going to be sharing with you today. So, um, Felina, let's start by telling the audience a little bit about you and and your personal journey and how you got to um, to where you are in launching Hira Hub. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family, so I guess you could say it's in my blood. Um, and grew up in what I kind of like to say a, a rebellious family. That's that's part of the the book that I just launched uh, called Flake Club, and the tagline is Rebel, Reinvent, and Thrive, How to Launch Your Dream Business. Um, that rebellion piece uh, comes through just growing up in a very unconventional, again, entrepreneurial family, <laughs> and then becoming an entrepreneur myself at age 30. So I started my career um, at, right out of college in sales and then moved into marketing. Um, and then spent about eight years working for small startup companies. Um, and the reinvention part of my story comes through getting laid off three times by the age of 30. Two of the companies I worked for sold and one ran out of money, which is not, uh, you know, <laughs> unknown in the world of technology. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, and, and the other part of the, the re invention piece for me um, and really what I would say drives me and gives me what I like to call uh, a good amount of grit <laughs> which is kind of a popular term right now Angela Duckworth's book um, we're actually reading for our book club book um, was I got hit by a fire truck at age 22 and broke 27 bones in my arms legs and wow. face and um, definitely should not be alive at this moment. Um, and so going through that experience at a young age gave me that amazing amount of perspective and grit, you could say, and allowed me the opportunity to, I guess, reinvent myself to some extent. And through the course of my early career and going through those three layoffs, it really kind of catapulted me into entrepreneurship at age 30. So I started, um, like a lot of women do, a uh, consultancy-based business. Um, I took my skill set that I learned in the startup world, uh, marketing strategy primarily, and launched a marketing strategy consulting firm called Perspective Marketing. And uh, nothing, you know, too earth-shattering. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. And, you know, I worked with, primarily over the course of eight years, um, anything that was a relationship driven sales. So referral driven sales through uh, my clients were CPAs and attorneys and small banks and things of that nature. Again, any type of referral based business. And I did run a couple professional women's organizations through that period of time. And the, the combination of me working at home for eight years with my marketing strategy business and then hosting a lot of events, as you do as well, yeah. led me to the need for space, frankly. And uh, I looked at the co-working space landscape at the time, this is in 2010, and it was mostly geared towards, you know, 22 year old techie guys kind of <laughs> places, and yeah. which is great and cool and awesome, but just wasn't my tribe, so to speak. And so I started researching the market and 
uh, just, I saw a need and long story short, through a lot of, you know, blood, sweat and tears, <laughs> made it happen, opened my first space in 2011. And till they knew that I wanted to build something bigger than myself, my prior business was me, myself and I, and some subcontractors, and I wanted to build a brand that was bigger. And so I've done that with Hera Hub. I opened three locations in San Diego County in the first two years of business so I could build it and break it and build it and break it again <laughs> and, you know, really build a system and a model that works. And uh, so now we've licensed the model. Um, we just came out with that licensing model earlier this year. So we're just kind of at the beginning, so to speak, but we do have an open location in Washington, D.C. We just signed our first international licensing deal in Stockholm, Sweden. So we'll be opening there soon. And then I have four active, what we call market assessments, um, folks that have raised their hand and are going through a pretty extensive process to potentially license the brand here in the U.S. Um, so we should have more to announce very soon. So when you and I initially talked, because this is new to me, right, the licensing, mm -hmm. and you and I initially talked and you were going to be doing a franchise Mm -hmm. So what were some of the, the things that caused you to pivot? Because I think it's, it's, it's important for women mm -hmm. to know how you came to that conclusion, you know, what was best for your, for your, uh, for your company. Yeah, it's such a fantastic question. So you're right, we did set off initially down a franchise path. Mm -hmm. And the simple answer is, um, partially perception, to be honest, mm -hmm. I mean, the perception of a franchise, you know, when you ask anybody on the street, you know, what's the first franchise that comes to your mind? It's McDonald's primarily. Right. <laughs> and that's not my brand. <laughs> you know, this is a community of collaborative, amazing women and a few good men. Yes, we are female focused to co-working space, but we're not exclusive, of course. And so, you know, it's about building this, you know, amazing platform where women can share and collaborate and build amazing businesses and support each other um, in this unique environment that we've built. And that that doesn't, you know, jive with McDonald's. So to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh -huh. the, um, you know, it, it just the feeling and what the hoops that we had to jump through and the potential franchisee had to jump through were significant. Mm. And so we did pivot to a licensing model again earlier this year, and it really has made all the difference, not only in the, the small differences in the execution, but also, frankly, just the overall perception of the approachability of, of the option. Right. So basically, if I understand it correctly, I, I know in the basic differences between a franchise model and a license model, so because TED is a license model. That's how mm -hmm. we're able to do TEDx events, right? So you have yeah. these guidelines and rules that, that we abide by where a franchise model is actually having um, all the infrastructure that you yeah, would so need. Yeah, so we still provide the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's about a thousand different definitions and ways to slice the pie yeah. between licensing and franchising. Um, yes, a lot of licensing models are a little looser, for lack of a better term, right. you know, in regards to execution. And yes, I mean, that was an important piece for us to some extent, because we have amazing women showing up. Sophia yeah. Renamar, who licensed the model in Sweden, is such a thought leader. She's such an incredible woman. She's had so much experience there. We wanted to build, you know, give her the, the tool set, so to speak, the, yeah. the structure, the framework. But of course, there's going to be localization. Things are different in Sweden, and she needs right. to have that opportunity to localize it with the strong support and framework. So we're extending the brand, we're extending the model, but it does allow for a bit more uh, leeway as far as implementation goes. Yeah, that's really great, because I think that's one thing that a lot of organizations miss is... You know, if you do franchise something or even nonprofit organizations, a lot of nonprofit organizations that that think because one um, solution works in one community that it's perfect for another community. And that's really not the case a lot of times because you have to um, go into that specific community or have people, you know, in um, 
like let's take North Dallas and South Dallas, two totally different mm-hmm. communities. And something that works in North Dallas is not going to be necessarily working in South Dallas. So I like the idea that you actually give people the flexibility to adapt. Yes. <clears throat> awesome. So tell me about your your book that you um, that you've written, Flight Club. I love the the tagline, the <laughs> the rebel, reinvent, and thrive. Yeah, thank you. Um, So yes, I published a book, my first book earlier this year. Uh, The book is part my story and journey to entrepreneurship. Um, Let me just pause on the title for a second because it does kind of catch people off guard a little bit. So flight, not not to be confused with Fight Club, (laughs) the uh, late 90s movie with Brad Pitt. It is a play on the title of that movie, of course. Um, But flight meaning taking flight as an entrepreneur and the front of the book and the book can be found on Amazon. uh, The front of the book, you'll see an image of a peacock taking flight. And uh, the peacock is significant because going back to the beginning of my story and growing up in this quite unconventional family that I did, we had peacocks, pet peacocks, and uh, dozens and dozens of other types of animals (laughs) here in California. And uh, I actually, my first entrepreneurial venture was uh, selling peacock feathers at the corner, you know, deli in my small town on the central coast of California. Uh, very ambitiously went around the yard and picked up the, the fallen peacock feathers every fall and <laughs> sold them and walked away with 80 bucks at age eight. So my first taste of entrepreneurship, so to speak. Um, and then the other tie-in is Hera or Hera, if you're in Greece, is the Greek goddess of women. And her symbol, um, ironically, was said to be the male peacock feather because she was known to have big, beautiful eyes and was very watchful over women, guarding and protecting them through every stage of life. So this full circle conversation of my story and the story of Hera and the growth of Hera Hub tie into, interestingly enough, this this connotation of the peacock and taking flight. So um, <laughs> so the book, again, I have a long answer, but the book is, again, my story as an entrepreneur, my, my journey as an entrepreneur, and then stories of about a dozen dozen other women of what we call the the lean out moment. Of course, everybody knows Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean In. My my take on that is actually don't lean in, lean out and start your own business. You know, don't, you don't need to mess with the corporate, you know, boardroom games there, so to speak. So, and then advice really from five or excuse me, six additional women um, and exercises. Uh, Really, the book is targeted towards women who haven't launched their business yet and are thinking about it and want to kind of break out of the corporate chains that the book, uh, or excuse me, the the movie Fight Club was very much about, you know, breaking out of the norm and doing something different Mm -hmm. um, and being part of something bigger, so to speak. And so um, there's, again, stories, but also exercises to help an entrepreneur through or aspiring entrepreneur through that process. And then the last part of the book is something that I've been wanting to build for a long time. It's an online platform called steps to startup.com and then book buyers get three months free access to that 17 foundational steps to build your business. And Tildy, the reason why I put that together and it took quite some time, it's video content. And then of course, additional content links and things of that nature that are outside of the book is because I meet so many folks who have launched their business six months, nine months, a year into it, and they haven't gotten some of those basic foundational pieces right. I I can't tell you how many people I've had conversations with. And again, they're nine months into their business and they have no clue what quarterly taxes are. (laughs) You know, the the boring stuff that uh, we tend to, you know, let's get a website and business cards and, you know, and all, you know, we get excited about all the marketing stuff, but some of the nuts and bolts and systems and operations that people just don't do. And it's not because the information's not out there. It's because it's overwhelming. Right. And so we break it down into a sequential step-by-step process, do this first and then move on to this. Um, And so that content, basic content's in the book, but we drive the readers back to the website. Again, they get free access to that for a period of time to take what they've learned in the book and actually put it into action. 
Awesome. So do you help them guide them through business plans or anything like that? Or is it just the business basics of foundational work? Because, you know, a lot of times I know when I was first launching my business, um, the business plan was just daunting. And it actually just stopped me in my tracks because I was so afraid (laughs) because I didn't know where to start. Yeah, you know, it's such a good question. So I actually don't advocate for folks to write a full business plan in this day and age, unless you're going for traditional loan from a bank or you're trying to get in front of a venture capitalist. We advocate as the second step of the process once you've, you know, gone out and talked to some customers is more of the lean business canvas, you know, kind of the one page Mm -hmm. business plan. Um, Yes, you need to think about these areas in your business, you know, competition, target market, all these things. But um, even though I taught college and taught entrepreneurship and made, you know, hundreds of my students write (laughs) full scale business plans, I don't, I actually don't, you know, the world has changed, frankly, and you don't need the 40 page business plan again, unless you're going to get financing. Right. You know, and one of the things that really helped me, um, you know, just get unstuck was when somebody introduced me to the business model generation. Have you read yes. that book? Yes, I of love course. Yeah. that book. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it, it really for me as somebody who's visual, especially, you know, to see it, and to see examples of other companies and to be able to create your own kind of social enterprise, if you will. Um, yeah. It was really, really helpful to, um, to think of, of a business model so to speak, instead of a business plan. Yep, that's exactly one of the tools that we use in the so startup program. You're right. It's a really, really great tool. Yeah, and I highly suggest it to, to anybody out there who who is thinking about starting a business because it asks you all the right questions in each of those areas that are that are relevant to actually being able to build a sustainable business model. So um, yep. it's called The Business Model Generation if you're interested in, in reading that book. So... Yep. Um, a little bit on the, because one of the things that we focus on here at Womanars and one of the things that I'm really passionate about is helping people thrive, whether it's in business or in life. And, um, it's my belief that until women learn to, um, or really step into and stand in our power, you know, in all areas of our life, um, then that kind of transfers into our business, right? So for us, we look at our mind, body, spirit. We look at finances, business, relationships, and adventure and fun. Reminding, because I think I'm a huge advocate of reminding women to have have fun in their life and include it and make time for it. Um, So when you mention thrive in your book, what does that what does that mean to you? And how did you get to a point in your own life where you were able to to thrive? Yeah, so I'll I'll approach that question in this way. You know, again, I was fortunate and I do feel fortunate to have gone through a lot in my 20s um, and and be able to have the perspective that I have on life. And, you know, through that and exploring, you know, why am I here? What am I meant to do, frankly? I mean, we all have that conversation um, with ourselves at some point in life and sometimes often. And for me, the thrive, you know, part of my (laughs) journey, so to speak, really came when I was able to put all the things together that I was excited about, passionate about, good at, uh, into one business. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I was the girl with four business cards. I kid you not, (laughs) you know, it was, I had my marketing business and I was teaching college and I was running these groups and I was doing this art meets fashion thing. I mean, I was, you know, I had a lot of things that I was excited and passionate about, but they were all sort of in different buckets. And thriving for me was launching Hera Hub. It was taking all these amazing relationships that I had built over, you know, the course of my career, working with so many women, you know, helping them ideate and launch their business and grow their business through these organizations that I was running and bring that under one roof mm-hmm. where women could come together and, and, you know, put the puzzle pieces together as well, build this strong platform. So, you know, when, when all areas of your life are in complete alignment, mm-hmm. <laughs> it is 
really remarkable. You, you just know it. And so that's, that's what thrive means for me personally. Yeah, you know, and I think so many women um, today are really asking themselves that question, you know, you can be, you know, I don't think age has anything to do with it. And I think some, some 20 something year olds are asking themselves the same questions that you and I have asked ourselves, you know, I know when I went through my divorce in 2005, it really, really catapulted me to ask myself um, questions like, who am I? And what am I really passionate about? And what do I want to do with the second half of my life that actually has meaning? And I think a lot of women are asking themselves those questions. And like you, you know, I went back to all the things that I loved. I've always been passionate about uh, empowering women and girls have taught, you know, um, women's empowerment classes in my late 20s to my early 30s and then kind of dwindled away from that. Um, as I got more into the commingling of life with my ex-husband. Um, <clears throat> so when the divorce happened, you know, I really started to reevaluate the things that I was good at, the things that I loved, and went back to those things. And that's actually how uh, Womanars came to life. So like you, it's a combination of all the things that I love. And it was also an exploration of things that I didn't even know I was good at, but now I know that I am. I have a different skill set and I and I enjoy everything that I do in this business. Have you found the same thing with with Hero Hub? Oh yeah. I I mean, I routinely say I don't even feel like I'm working. And yeah. I, I, I always put I always put two caveats on that. Unless I'm doing accounting or reviewing a contract, right. <laughs> then you know let's, but that's like five percent of the time, right? So ninety-five percent of the time. I don't even feel like I'm working. It is, yeah. you know, I write about this in the book, Tildy. It's, uh, you know, a lot of discussion around work-life balance, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I haven't, every single panel discussion I think I've ever been on, I've yeah. got, gotten that question. <laughs> How, what's your work-life balance like? <laughs> and I'm like, it's terrible. My work-life balance is terrible because it's all blended into one big, you know, pot of spaghetti, so to speak. I mean, I, there is no delineation to me between work and life. It's all mixed together. And I, for me, that's, that's thriving, right? It's yeah. not having to choose one thing over another. It's just putting it all together. And so I really, really love what I do. And, you know, that's why I'm excited to expand this concept and really give other women an opportunity to take the model we built. I'll be honest, I've made a million mistakes. I've spent well over a hundred thousand dollars that I didn't need to spend, you know, buying the wrong system, software, furniture, marketing. I mean, ever I've made a million mistakes and I continue to make mistakes. It's just part of being in business, but really, truly, you know, being able to share what I've learned and done and the amazing team I've put together has, has learned and done for others and build a global community of women who get it, who are collaborative and supportive of one another. I meet so many women who are still in corporate and they're just astounded that I have, you know, 400 women who are working together arm in arm (laughs) and helping each other constantly, you know, they're like, what? How does that work? You know, they just have never experienced anything like that in corporate America. So right. hopefully we'll, 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 the vibration of what you and I and, and all of us are doing will, you know, maybe ripple back into corporate someday. <laughs> yes, let's hope so. And I think, you know, that only will happen by leading by example and teaching others how to do that as well. Because I think a, a lot of times women um, have been brought up not to collaborate or they don't even yeah. know what that means. You know, they don't know what that yeah. looks like, really, not what it means, but what it really looks like. And I think until they see examples of what what it looks like and and the effects the positive effects that it can have on their lives and their business i think it's um um, imperative for them to actually see it in action you know yes absolutely so um what's next for you i mean what are you what's next for hero hub and what's next for you um you know i know that you're working on this online uh, platform, learning platform for business owners. What's what's next? Yeah, so the steps to startup.com site is up. And so that's, you know, part of the book. And that's, you know, obviously, we'll continue to update it, you know, as, as new tools come out. But yeah. that's really kind of said. 
My vision and mission is to support over 20,000 women in the launch and growth of their business by 2020. And so we're doing that through the licensing expansion. Again, I hope to have a few other cities to announce here very shortly, mm-hmm. as well as the uh, book itself. I've been doing uh, a, quite a bit of speaking and reaching out to different uh, communities. And so where, you know, there's areas where I don't have a hair hub, I can certainly share the message and the story of what we're doing through the book. Awesome. Well, how can they, um, where can people go or women go to find out more about the licensing for Hera Hub? Absolutely. It's on our website and it's just herahub.com and that's H-E-R-A again after the Greek goddess of women. <laughs> and there's a launch, launch a Hera Hub link there uh, right on the website and lots of information there on the expansion and what we're looking for. Awesome. Well, and if we're going to actually put that I think Dave can put that on the comments in the comments as well. So we'll do that so that you, um, our audience can just simply go to the link, um, that's that we post and connect with you there. So, um, do you do speaking or is hero hub basically how people can get a hold of you? Um, if they want to interview you or, you know, invite you to speak at, at their events. Yep, absolutely. There's pretty much everything is through the website. There's links to the founding team, which includes information about speaking. And I'm super active on social media. I love Twitter, obviously a big user of LinkedIn as well. And so folks can certainly reach out to me through either of those channels as well. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Felina, for being here on uh, Tuesdays with Tildy on our Womanars page, really appreciate your time. I know you have a busy schedule and uh, appreciate you addressing our audience and helping our audience with uh, some key uh, insight into how you built your dream business. My pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. If you have any questions for Felina, um, if you're watching this on, on demand or, you know, after we record this, please just put in... Um, any comments or questions that you might have for her and I'll be sure and and make sure that she sees those so that we can answer them for you if we can. Thanks for watching and also if you like what you're seeing be sure and share it. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep us a secret. Um, Also if if you want to help us and join with us and partner with us in helping us to continue these free episodes of Tuesdays with Tildy, please visit our Patreon page on patreon.com. It's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash womanars where you can um, donate as little as a dollar all the way up to whatever it is that you can donate to help us continue to reach as many women as possible all around the world. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.